Ooh, okay. Summer on Pat season for August 2022. And you know Samsung are now dropping their new products and it's all based around their foldables. And we're going to be talking about the Galaxy Z Fold 4 because I managed to get brief hands-on. Not really that much, but brief hands-on. And I want to share my thoughts as someone that owned outright the Fold 2, had the Fold 3 for a decent amount of time, which I still got about somewhere here. And pretty much give my thoughts to see is it really what we've expected, especially if you're coming from the Fold 2 specifically and even comparing it to the Fold 3. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I managed to get hands on with the Fold 4 and we know the Fold series started back in 2019 around the S10 times and it's going to be interesting to see where we are, man. This is the fourth generation and it's really just going to be breaking down my quick overall overview and impressions because I didn't really get to use it within any length of time. It was less than an hour, 40 minutes. So we'll start with the design because things feel right at home. We do have three colors, obviously. Phantom Black is still there. And we've got the gray green and we've got the beige. And let me say this, that beige color is nice because you know what? I'm going for a phrase right now here that since the S21 Ultra, the dark colors, they just don't really do it for me. And I'll be honest with you, I was way more attached to that beige color than I was expecting. I'm really, really feeling that at all. If you really look at it compared to the Fold 3, it feels right at home. And you know what? It is the sense of deja vu all over again, but this is what they've been able to do. They've actually widened the phone's out cover display by 2.7 millimeters, double wider aspect ratio, and also a slightly higher resolution as well. So 120 Hertz on the outer cover display. Now the inner cover display is still 7.6 inches, but given it slimmer bezels, bezels. <laughs> they've given it slimmer bezels, and also in terms of just what it is, they've been able to reduce the weight down as well. So it's about 263 grams, but I'll be dead honest with you, it is lighter, but when you have the Fold 3 there as reference like I did, if you were using an isolation, you wouldn't really notice, but you know what, it's welcome. A lighter Fold to make it feel closer to what you're used to on these solid state smartphones that we're used to in terms of tradition. Like what I used the S22 Ultra, yeah man, I'm all game for it. So. How does that really feel in terms of the design in itself? Well, it's actually more flat and more rounded around the edges. So I'm indifferent to it. I'm not too sure whether I like it or not. I think I'm gonna need more time once I have it. But overall, it's just the trimmings and it's almost like the changes that they've made is just enough to justify a big enough change. But you know what? It ain't really what we're expecting or hoping for, for something like a wider 22 by nine aspect ratio to display 21 by nine or even 20 by nine like we have on a normal phone. But you know what? It's a slight difference enough that might just make the outer cover display more usable for a longer period of time before you're ready to just jump in on the inner display. Now let's move over to that inner display for a minute. Still does have S Pen support, but it is still needing the S Pen Fold edition of the S Pen Pro. And obviously that S Pen Pro is a lot bigger as well. It has got the dual tips, but S Pen Fold is what you need right there. The display itself pretty much sits the same as what we've experienced, but we're talking about the display immersiveness, bezels are slimmer, still at 6.7 inches, and under display camera. I've got to give it to them. I've always agreed with them making that move with the UDC camera. And this time when I was using it subconsciously, I didn't pick it up. Look, if you're actually looking for it intentionally, especially with the camera, yeah, you can see it. Even when you compare it to the Fold 3, you can definitely see it. But you know what? I've got to give them credit because they've done a lot of work to actually make it disguise and blend in even better. So using that in display becomes a lot more fun. But overall, beige color hits for me. The display tech is interesting and also the design is good. It's just a more hope. I was really hoping that the S Pen was going to be built into the frame. And this is where you just got to manage your expectations with the rumors when they come out one, two, you still can't set the refresh rate independently from the outer to the inner cover display. Now, I've got to give it to them. The refresh rate is adaptive, 1Hz to 120 for the inner and 48 to 120 for the outer, right? You don't get S Pen support for the outer cover display still. Again, we're just starting to see, we're starting to see this trend that it is quite difficult for them to pull off these things that we're hoping for. Maybe for generation five, but give them credit. Still one of the only set of foldables that has an IPX, <laughs> IPX8. Now I'm getting myself muddled up. IPX rating, so no dust resistance, but water resistance for up to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes for fresh water. So gotta give it to them, man. They've done their bits when it comes to the display and the design is well refined. Only time will tell if I really feel for it. Specs and performance. And let me tell you, yeah, when it comes to bragging rights, boy, Samsung got really on game. 
they're happy to pretty much announce that this is their most powerful Galaxy device for this generation period. Why? Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. And that's on the 4 nanometer TSMC process, not on Samsung's own nanometer process fabrication. And this is what they're getting. And we actually also have 12 gigabytes of RAM, still no 16 gig RAM option, like what we had back in the day with the S20 Ultra series. But we do have a one terabyte option, 512 gig and 256. So we've seen that the micro SD card, we still get dual SIM, which I'm happy to report and everything. But this is something where Samsung are serious. I mean, what were the hands on that we're telling like, look, for gaming performers, this is the most powerful. And on top of that, if you actually consider what they've done with the efficiency of the 4 nanometer TSMC process, yes, we still do have a 4,400 milliamp hour battery. There's no increase in it. We've not hit the 5,000 magic number yet for foldables. Again, balancing the thickness, the weight and everything. But if that manufacturing process with the 8 Plus Gen 1 is meant to be efficient, yeah, we could be seeing some really good results when it comes to the improvement over the Fold 3. Only time will sell though, but you know what? I'm glad we've got the best of the best from Qualcomm. And in fact, even against the normal Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 variant of the S22, this is the most powerful that they've got right there. So I'm eager to test that out for sure. All these changes are solid, but I've got to give it to them, man. Nothing compares to how eagerly we've been anticipating the camera hardware improvements to be in line. Just for context, man, these foldable devices is even on the fold. They've pretty much been using that 2019, 2020 sensors mixed between the ultra wide and the wide and the zoom. The zoom was really from the 2019 era of smartphones and 2018 era of smartphones. So to finally have what looks like the same physical hardware as the S22 Plus, boy, well done, finally. Now, it's not on the same level as that massive S22 Ultra series built around that 108 megapixel sensor and that massive 10X optical zoom. But you know, I'm gonna take this one, why? We've got the 12 megapixel ultra wide. We've got the same pretty much 50 megapixel main sensor that does now do 8K 24 frames a second, whether that's useful to you or not. But the most important thing, man, 3X optical zoom, 10 megapixels with 30X digital space zoom, just like what you find on the S22 Plus and for the outer cover display, the same 10 megapixel selfie. Obviously, like we said before, the under display camera for the inner display is still limited to four megapixels. It's f1.8 and it's got a large two zero micron pixel size. But that main camera, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna test it against the S22 Plus and really see how close it gets. And you know what? I'm gonna actually say this and call this out right now. An outright performance, it might just beat it. Why? In here, UK. Our S22 Plus is using the Exynos 2200 and you know the ISP, the image signal processor doesn't rock anywhere near compared to what Qualcomm throw down. So this might be the best performing camera even against the S22 Plus and S22 and I might be very close to the S22 Ultra minus the colossal zoom and of course 108 megapixel sensor and the 40 megapixel selfie as well. But yeah, things are interesting and gotta give it to them as well you can now really be pulling off very high quality selfies because that new 50 megapixel sensor with the image processing of the 8 plus gen 1 from Qualcomm and the flex hinge and the flexibility that you get with being able to use those cameras at the back and still frame yourself yeah well done samsung we're still waiting for the day that we can have the ultra cameras on the fold but you know what i'm gonna take this one you are up to date and we are in line software specifically for the fold 4 it's using one ui 4.1.1 with Android 12 L, yes, people, they were dubbing this Android 12 L. Obviously, L for the large form factor screen, which is pretty much mimicking a tablet. So what are some of the new changes that they've done? Again, I'm not really want to be doing software breakdown videos here. Head over to Sam Mobile for that. But I will say that the main thing that they really wanted to throw down and show is the new taskbar. Again, if you're using a Windows operating system or even a Mac OS or desktop in general, you know that the taskbar at the bottom is something that gives you quicker access to your favorite apps and to switch in between them. So without needing to go into Dex, you're able to just have that from the home screen with the taskbar. Can you disable it? Yes, in settings there's a toggle for it, so really appreciate that. But the good thing is that you've got app pairs that you can put in the taskbar, which is even better that, you know, not having to go into the apps edge and you can just launch up to three of your favorite apps app paired at the same time, switch between them. You know the flexibility, one of the best things about the fold, especially for the screen form factor, you can be so productive with all these apps at the same time and pretty much get to moving with it. Look, 
Full details will come on the software, but yeah, it's One UI 4.1.1. It's an iterative change. We're gonna compare it and see soon. But yeah, that's pretty much the software when it comes to the fold. Like wrapping this all up, the fold is still up there, you know. It's 1,649 pounds and it goes all the way up to 2,019 pounds if you go for one terabyte. It is a weird case of deja vu, but you know what, yeah? I think this is walking a path like Neo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check this, right? It needs to really prove to us here yeah, that if it's still the one, yeah. Because right now, it is the weird case of like, yeah, it's a glitch in the matrix. It is the case of deja vu. And is it really worth upgrading? Not when we were expecting certain things to really be pulled off. Maybe an even wider aspect ratio display. Maybe the S Pen built into the frame and hot take. I might have even taken 200 million power less to have the S Pen built into the frame. I don't know. Maybe some people might still want the ultra camera but I still think the S22 camera hardware in there is still going to be more than good enough. I don't know, man. It's going to be a tough one. You know, S Pen support and outer cover display. Yeah, different ones, different ones. But you know what? Hopefully, I should be getting review units in. We're going to be testing, reviewing it, and comparing. So watch out for it. But yeah, those are my initial impressions of it. I'm impressed, but it is the case of deja vu. That's it for me, Ben from Lover of Tech. If you enjoy videos like this, you know exactly what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're part of Team TLS to Tech Lover Squad so you don't miss any future videos on the channel. Hope you're all safe during this time. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.